serves as Vice President and General Manager for Customer Experience at Bombardier Business Aircraft. Bombardier's heritage dates back to the very first business jets and today their product lines feature the broadest portfolio of business aircraft including the Learjet, Challenger and Global Jet families. Jean-Christophe joined Bombardier in 2002 and previously served as Vice President of Strategy and Marketing and Innovation. He's also active in the industry, sitting on the board of directors of the Canadian Business Aviation Association and he also represents Bombardier with the General Aviation Manufacturers Association. And today I think he's going to give us hopefully a very enjoyable and insightful, insightful speech on the business aviation market outlook. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to welcome Jean-Christophe Gallagher to the stage. All right. You guys can hear me well? All right, and please call me JC. This is how uh, everybody calls me around here, around here. So thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure um, to be spending a few minutes with you today and talk about the future of business aviation and give you our humble view at Bombardier on things to come. Pierre has done a really good job, better than I could have done, on introducing our company, four big divisions, our commercial aircraft division, the train division, we have an aerostructures division, and our business aviation uh, franchise, a $6 billion franchise with brand names that you know very well, Global, Challenger, and Learjet. And it all started back in 1963 with Bill Lear's Learjet 23. And since then, it's been an amazing growth journey. We've been through the ups and the downs, all of us together. And you can see that the European, European market has been a great contributor to this growth over time, especially in the last 20 years. This is why it makes it so um, important and interesting for us today to be presenting this vision of what's next for business aviation within a European context. When people ask us today how we feel about you know, our industry, where do we stand right now? We would say that 2016, we see a continued stabilization of this marketplace. When you look at economic indices that are highly correlated with the health of our industry, we can say that uh, we're cautiously optimistic. We see, for example, worldwide GDP growth at almost 3% year over year. We see the stock market up, you know, 15% year over year. Oil is stable. And aircraft utilization, if you look at Europe specifically, is up by about 2%. And this feeling is con confirmed to us um, this week, Ed, by good attendance at eBay's and actually a lot of activity on the new aircraft sales side. When we look at the next five years, a bit longer term, we still see strong fundamentals in this business. This year, this industry will deliver for $17 billion worth of products. And we believe it will grow to $23.5 billion by 2021. On the back of 3,200 deliveries across the industry, almost evenly split now between the three big categories, light jets, medium-sized airplanes, and large, long-range aircraft. And these large, long-range aircraft, these 1,100 uh, long-range aircraft will actually contribute to more than 50% of the revenue of this industry. When we look at geographical markets, we see Europe coming number two position with more than 600 deliveries over that period. And of course, our industry will grow as the economy gets better, but we have a lot to do and a lot that we can do to inject energy into this market and enhance the growth we're going to see over this period. And I'd like to talk a little bit about that today. But first, to be able to look forward, we have to look back a little bit. We've talked earlier, it was mentioned, that we look at productivity of airplanes in our industry through things like how far airplanes fly, range, how fast they get there, speed, and how big the cabin volume is for that particular mission. We've used for years the productivity index. And if you look back in 1992 at this price versus productivity curve, you see there were 15 dots on this chart 25 years ago. Today, there are 
as many as 40 models of aircraft in business aviation on this productivity chart. And the one thing to notice is that there are many dots over dots, which means that customers have choice. For a given mission profile, they can decide between multiple platforms. So the question is, how does one distinguish themselves in this market to go and win that business? We have to look back at needs that created business aviation and how they evolved over time. When Bill Lear brought the Learjet 23, the need was very simple. It was to fly privately, direct to the destination. And then rapidly the need became flying coast to coast, non-stop. And then we saw Falcon 50, for example, come about. <laughs> I don't think Mark Burns is here. I can't do this with golf streams. <laughs> then we saw transatlantic flights then in a stand-up cabin. Challenger 600 came about in the 1980s. And then as globalization really took flight, we saw Larger airplanes, Gulfstream G5s, Global Express come about, 6,000 miles range, 7X. And then later on, we saw that we really put business aviation speed higher than our airline counterparts. So we really focused on setting new standards, Mach 8.5, 9.0. This was the 2000 period. But now that our airplanes fly halfway around the world at almost the speed of sound, carrying 15 people or more on board, what comes next? Not this. <laughs> this was actually the original Lear 23. and was a great airplane at the time. But Bill Lear was saying, why put a lavatory on this? I don't have a lavatory in my car. <laughs> Needs have evolved. And we have moved the focus from transportation to meeting more evolved human needs. The need to get a good night's sleep. The need to talk to your children that are back at home during the flight or to enjoy a great meal while being on board. And this is why we believe that the next phase for business aviation is about redefining and enhancing the in-flight experience. So how do we as an industry put the passenger at the heart of product design going forward? We have a framework we use in our company that I'd like to use for the next few minutes in this presentation. And it really talks about how cabin experience and starts with the overall configuration of the airplane, its structure, the airframe, and how it goes to the functionality within the cabin, the different amenities and equipment, and how it ends with the very smallest of detail that truly create the emotional connection between the machine and the human. So allow me to start talking about how manufacturers have worked on first the big level, the airframe level, how we've configured airplanes through time, and we've all worked on the same things. Examples of this is we've worked on making our airplanes quieter with a lower cabin altitude for passenger comfort. We've created flat floor cabins and wider cabins to allow free movement throughout this environment. We've worked on making sure that the most natural light could come into this cabin in all key locations. Probably one of the most important things we've worked on is how do we make this flight the smoothest it can be? How do we make the airplane behave perfectly even in turbulent air? And at Bombardier, we've been building long, slender wings for a long time that have high flexibility, high wing loading to minimize 
how the turbulence gets to the airframe. And I want to make you smile for a few seconds. I want to show you this video that was shot at 41,000 feet at Mach 8.5. I allow myself two minutes of shameless Bombardier advertising. I apologize. <laughs> Moving on from the overall aircraft configuration, let's step into the cabin. And let's talk about the functionalities that will, will really meet these evolved human needs. Probably the most important thing today is connectivity connectivity, and connectivity. The need to be able to, the ability to be able to FaceTime your kids while on board or participate in this online meeting with colleagues back at the office. With K-Band technology now, we have finally the speed and the stability to be able to do that. And you can stream from multiple different sources in parallel, so you can actually watch Fox News in the front of the airplane and CNN at the back if your family happens to be divided in their politics. <laughs> From a dining experience perspective, we've seen a whole bunch of new technologies. Ovens that are not only microwave ovens, but steam ovens and convection ovens, all in one unit. We now have drawers that preheat the plates before serving inside the cabin. We have refrigerator banks that go all the way from the floor to the ceiling. We've moved on from the prepackaged sandwiches on board Bill Lear's Lear 23 and are truly moving to the level of a gourmet meal with friends and colleagues aboard the airplane. That seat you sit on for your dining experience is the same seat you're going to need later to relax or even to nap. Seat technology is at the heart of business aviation. We're asking our seats to do all these different functions. At home, you would have different furnitures to actually accomplish all of these different missions. When we designed the Global 7000 a few years back, we, brought, we came back to the origin of the seat. Really looked at how the body geometry interacted with the seat geometry. And we really focused on designing a seat that was optimized for all of these different functions. A seat that truly cradles the body. A seat that we're now bringing back on the rest of our portfolio. But as comfortable we can make the seat, it will never replace the bed, permanent bed, at the back of the aircraft, which was which was what we do today on the Global 7000. Think about checking in your hotel room when you're departing from Zurich, flying over, taking a shower just prior to landing, and then checking out when you land in Tokyo, and get 
right away to your meeting at the FBO. We believe that those sets of functionalities, of features, are really what will cater to these new needs that we are talking about. But how do we create this emotional bond between the customer and our products? How do we create the need for an aircraft replacement? We believe that this emotional connection between man and machine, human and machine, is created with the very smallest details inside this cabin. A few years back, we were on a journey to create uh, our Global Vision flight deck. And we designed a flight deck experience. And think about it, this is the most utilitarian area of the aircraft. And we start bringing the styling and these very minute details inside the cockpit to generate this connection. We did things like putting leather on the yokes and French stitching, putting chrome accents on levers. Meanwhile, in the back of the airplane, we all brought new higher-end materials, new textures. We all raised the level of quality of our aircraft interiors. And right now, what we're seeing is a rapid acceleration of the pace at which all of us as the manufacturers bring new interiors to the marketplace. And really what we're trying to create is this reaction from the potential buyer when they sit in that seat and touch the contours and those textures. The reaction that this is the airplane to buy amongst all these dots on that productivity chart. Now it does seem that for the last 15 minutes and maybe for the last 50 years, we've worked very hard to remove the flying from the flying by creating this home-like environment that's so quiet and peaceful. So as a conclusion to this presentation, I offer you this thought. When you look back at our video just a bit earlier and you say, we ended this by saying, forget your flying. Maybe the next, we spend the next 30 years actually bringing the thrill of flight back to the cabin. Maybe we work collectively on creating an airplane that truly celebrates flight. What does this aircraft look like? Maybe something like this, something like that. As an industry, we need to continue to innovate. We need to continue bringing exciting things into the marketplace. This looks really, really hard to execute from an airframe perspective. <laughs> But look how far we've come in the last 50 years. We need to continue to bring passion into the products we bring to the marketplace. Because this is the passion that was there at the very begin beginning that brought us here today. So thank you very much for your attention. And I'd love to turn it for questions, for comments on what we've just presented to you today. <laughs>